Good morning, traders. It is Tuesday, May 3rd. We're about two hours before the open. FOMC statement tomorrow. Big news. We'll get into that in just a little bit. Merck, MRK was your pick from last Friday. Love the stock. However, I gave you two conditions that kept us out of the trade. We'll get into that in just a little bit. Let me say that I really like Merck. I'm going to give you a new set of instructions toward the back end of this video. Really like what I see. Market first, market first, market first. The two conditions, Merck had to be above $90 and the S&P 500 had to be above $430, which is right in here. And you can see, no way, Jose. It has really been selling off hard. So I'm going to get into Merck a little bit later. We're going to find a new pick. We'll have two bullish trades working in the event that the reaction to the FOMC statement tomorrow is bullish. I believe that's what we're going to see. How can I tell what the reaction is going to be? Well, first of all, I have no clue. This could be support and this support could be violated in a major, major way to the downside after the announcement tomorrow. But I suspect that we're going to see a nice bounce. Earnings season has been excellent from a profit standpoint, from a revenue growth standpoint. So there really are not any dark clouds. And earnings are one of the fundamentals that drive the market. Interest rates also drive the market. Typically, you see a lot of fear and a lot of panic going into a rate hike, especially a 50 basis point rate hike. But this is not a surprise. Everyone is expecting this. The Fed has been super transparent. So they're going to reduce their quantitative easing. They're going to do that at twice the expected pace. That news is out there. The other news that's out there is that in June, they could raise 50 basis points. There is some room for them to maybe go 25 basis points in June and 25 basis points at every subsequent Fed meeting. If they start to see the economy slow down, they're going to ease off. So there is a chance for the market to rally on that type of news. But what the Fed is going to say tomorrow is pretty much baked into the market. Every Fed official has kind of stated where they're at. Even Bullard, he is the most hawkish Fed official out there. He said, yeah, I could see the case being made for a 75 basis point rate hike at this May meeting. But that's not where I am. So that tells you that he's not even at that level of hawkishness. So here's what happened in May. You can see, excuse me, in March, March 16th. This is the last FOMC statement. Look at that steep sell-off that we had. Lots of panic, lots of fear. Oh my God, Fed's going to hike interest rates. Look what happened Tuesday, which would be today before the FOMC statement. We had this nasty little low in here, and then we rallied all day Tuesday ahead of the FOMC statement. Bad news was baked in. Look at that beautiful little rally that we had. This was very tradable, and we took advantage of that. I think we could be seeing similar in here. Now, I'm not looking for us to get back above the 100-day moving average. I feel that we could have maybe a week or two of decent price action to the upside, even if the Fed says 50 basis points now, 50 basis points in June, and 25 basis points every meeting thereafter the rest of the year. So that's how we're going to be looking at this. You can see yesterday, market sold off hard. We took out the low from February. Then what happened? Rally, rally, rally. Right off of that low, some nice stacked green candles in here on excellent volume. So that also tells me that buyers are interested at this level. So we'll see what unfolds today, but I suspect right now the S&P 500 is down about 20 points before the open. So some of these gains are being given back, but I think we're going to find early support. And I think the market's going to try and rally off of this low, especially given that bullish hammer that we have right here, and that perhaps, yes, fear is priced into the market, 
and we'll get a little bit of a relief bounce afterwards. So the trades that I'm going to show you, you do not want to be hanging on to these for a week, two weeks, three weeks. Everything right now is a very short term play. Look, even this rally that we had here, this is maybe a week and a half. And then things start to wane almost immediately. And then you start getting into very choppy conditions in here. Down 50 points one day, up 60 points the next, down 60 points the next day, up 70 points the next day, down 100 the next day. For swing trading, inside of a three or four week window, very, very difficult conditions. Day trading, fantastic. Short term overnight swings that span maybe a day, maybe two, maybe three. If we get this kind of relief rally, okay. But that'll be your window of opportunity for swing trading. Then you got to shut her down and get back into day trading mode. This breakdown right here, fine. You've got a few days here where you can string some overnight shorts together. Then you got to shut her down because now we're near that major low. So I'm expecting a FOMC bounce could start today, Tuesday. We should see follow through on Wednesday. If the SPY is able, to get above 420 today, I'd like to take these positions going into the FOMC statement. So I think that we could see that level. Here are the trades. First of all, we're going to take a look at Merck because that one's already on the deck. Why, do, why the heck do I like Merck so much? Well, look at this bullish flag. There's your flagpole. There's your downward sloping trend line. There's your earnings before the open. And look what the stock did after earnings that entire day. Rally, rally, rally mode. So I believe that the stock is going to get through that $90 price point. Let's zoom out. Take a look at the longer term picture. You can see $90 gets us right in here. With this type of pattern, I believe it's going to continue to go. So what has me so excited about it? Well, let's put up a 30-minute chart. Let's zoom back out. And let's put an SPY overlay up. And there you can see, there's your earnings reaction. Nice. Stock closes on its high of the day. And now you can see how the stock has been able to preserve most of these gains when the market has been absolutely crushed. That is relative strength. That tells me that this stock wants to go higher. So the condition for Merck is that the SPY has to trade above 300, excuse me, 420. So SPY has to trade above 420 and Merck has to be above $90. I still want to take this trade. Now, I wouldn't be hanging on to it for weeks, but to hang on to it for a couple days into the FOMC looking for that relief rally. Well, gee, Pete, what happens if the FOMC reaction is negative? That's certainly possible. That is absolutely possible. But we've already seen a stock like Merck weather the storm. So even if the bottom of the market drops out, Merck should hold up fairly well. Will it be a, a loser? Yes, it will be a loser. But it should be a relatively small loser. And if the reaction to the FOMC statement is good, I'm expecting this stock to fly higher. So I see much greater upside to this trade than I do downside. I also see a greater probability of us rallying off of this major support level right here after the FOMC statement because all of the news is out there. They are trying to be so transparent. They are not trying to blindside the market. They don't want to do that, especially when they're in tightening mode. So let's take a look at some other stocks that might work out really well for us. And as you start to run searches and you start to look for stocks, you scratch your head and you go, my gosh, all the patterns that I'm looking for, they're just not there. Everything has been nailed across the board. How am I possibly going to find stocks that want to move higher? Well, one thing that I'm looking for, because a lot of these stocks have sold off so hard. They're below all the major trend lines. They're below all the major moving averages. 
I hate bottom fishing. I'm really looking for relative strength. And you could just do relative strength searches. But here's what I have in the back of my mind. Companies have been announcing earnings like mad over the course of the last couple of weeks. The earnings in general have been excellent. What I want to find is I want a stock that's had relative strength the last few days that had a positive earnings reaction, and I have a search to help me find those. How many times have you looked at a stock that's just released earnings and you go, gosh, seems like that stock should be up, but it's not. Those earnings were excellent. And you kind of move on to the next day and you forget all about the stock. And then a week later, you look at the stock and you go, I knew that was a good one. I couldn't believe that that stock didn't move on that earnings news. Well, there's a lot of adjustment that goes on during the day of the announcement, the day after, and it takes a little while for that news to be digested. It takes sometimes a few days for institutions to show their hand. And when they do, we want to be able to pick up on those clues. And one search that helps us do that is called strong after earnings it is an option stalker and it is one of our, the searches that we provide under swing trading so i'm going to go down to strong after earnings and these are the stocks that look really good notice the market's been super weak there aren't a lot of them so what does the search look for it looks for a positive earnings reaction the first moment that the stock trades after the announcement. So if the stock traded yesterday and the the announcement was after the close yesterday and then today it rallies the entire day, that is noted. If it came up today before the open and the stock rallies on the news, that is noted. So what we're looking for is that initial positive reaction and for the stock to have been able to preserve those gains at least that low from the prior day's close. So these are the stocks that meet that criteria. And you'll see at the top of the list, Microsoft. And I'm going to take off the SPY overlay, but you can see Microsoft has actually held up very, very well. Here was a clue for me yesterday. So we already know on the daily chart it's held up pretty well. Now I'm going to put that SPY overlay back up just so you can see. So here's what happened yesterday. Look at the SPY, sell off, sell off, sell off. But look at Microsoft. It opened pretty much on its low of the day. So even after the market was making new lows for the day, look what Microsoft did. It preserved that opening price. That is a sign that buyers are in there supporting it because if there were sellers overpowering buyers, you would have had a huge drop when the market went down like this. But for every seller, there were more buyers. Buy, 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 buy. How many more you got? I want to get as much Microsoft as I can. When the market finally finds its low, look what Microsoft did. It flew higher. Yes, I like Microsoft. But it's what I call deep in a pocket. You can see a downward sloping trend line here, and the stock is still way below that downward sloping trend line. Yes, there's some nice horizontal support. I would rather see a little bit more lift in it, but you bet if we get that rally in the S&P 500, Microsoft is a stock that you want to be watching. Okay, well, what do I do with that? There's a nice little horizontal resistance level here and a little gap right in there. So I'm going to, going to click GTC. Drop it on that candle right there. And if it can get through this little horizontal resistance area, it's probably going to fill in that little gap and continue to go higher. I think I can find better. VLO, beautiful. Look at that relative strength. You can see the upward sloping trend line here. You can see what the stock's done the last couple of days when the market is selling off hard. Yes, I really like VLO. I do feel that the basic material stocks are... A little overheated, a little overdone. If we see a rotation into tech and other sectors, these may not participate to any great degree. They may just kind of tread water. We're also seeing other basic material stocks give back a lot of their gains, mainly in iron ore, steel types of stocks, because there is concern right now that we could see a recession and 
that will weigh on all of those stocks. So energy continues to be strong. CBE, I'm going to avoid. It's another uh, energy stock. So Facebook. Facebook, big rally after the earnings announcement. Let's go into that 15-minute chart and see what the stock has done since that earnings gap. Well, looky there. Rally, rally, rally. Look what the market has done. Absolutely been pounded. Facebook is preserving the bid. Facebook looks like it wants to go higher. I like Facebook. I think Facebook's going to go up. You also have a downward sloping trend line that comes into play about like that. That has been breached to the upside. We have a little bit of resistance right in here that it's going to have to try and get through. This is another resistance level that I've marked. I will get an alert when it gets through that. We're going to continue to go down. I'd like to see a little bit more strength. And stocks that have that type of negative earnings reaction and that can't really get into this gap for a very long time, that tells me that there are probably some pretty deep-seated issues. This stock has been in a massive downtrend. You can see there's your downtrend line. Still needs to get above that for me to be interested in PINS, but earnings there, decent reaction. You can see how the stock has been able to hold the bid even when the market is selling off. Market bounces a little bit. It's off to the races. So yes, at very least, a little bounce in PINS is coming. Downward sloping trend line on Qualcomm. Also, another nice one. Horizontal support. It's been able to get above that. Let's put up some major moving averages so that we have that as a reference point for our other stocks. And then you'll see where those come into play. And it's still got some resistance here that it's got to get through. Qualcomm can be very choppy. Looks great. Uh, Mm, no, lots of little bounces in here, so not my favorite. There's Merck. You know we like that one. PBI, downward sloping trend line, breach to the upside, still has horizontal resistance to get through here with the 100-day moving average. Hey, I just spotted a key technical price point. If this stock can get through that price point, then it will be through the 100-day moving average also. Hmm, better take the extra two seconds. And drop an alert line. Roku. Roku. Down. Trend line. Very, very weak stock. Yes, decent reaction after earnings. Could it get to the 50-day? Sure it could. There's your horizontal was support. Now resistance. Looks like it's getting through that. Yeah, Roku could go. WDC. I like this stock. I like it. This is going to be your pick of the day. So here's what I like about it. You come in, bounce, set this low, higher low, double bottom. Actually, a little bit of a head and shoulders formation in here. Kind of hard to see. Your neckline's like that. As far as a head and shoulders, it probably would be more like uh, Quasimodo. But there is one in there. The main thing is that you're making a higher low here. You've got a downward sloping trend line that's been breached to the upside. You have a horizontal resistance level that's been breached to the upside. You have the stock right on that 100-day moving average. Look at that volume. Now let's look at the relative strength intraday and pick up on that. There's your earnings reaction after the close. And you can see how the stock gapped up on that earnings reaction. So this is the price action the next day, again, after the close. And it holds all of the gains. Look at that market sell off. Look what the stock did. There are buyers in WDC. So we want the SPY above 320. We want the stock to be above the 100 day moving average. If you get those two conditions, and they can happen anytime, I'm just going to put that out there. Anytime you see that. So I think 54 is about where that 100-day moving average comes in, 54.13. Stock above the 100-day moving average, SPY above 420. Take a position in it. Look for a positive reaction to the FOMC statement. Do not overstay. You're welcome. I am only looking for a reprieve 
a little relief rally after the FOMC statement that perhaps lasts a few days to maybe a week, at very most two weeks, and then I think we start to see some nervous jitters heading into the June statement, which we would also see another 50 basis point rate hike in June. We do have some dark clouds on the horizon. China is really struggling with the uh, COVID virus. Beijing is close to a shutdown. Uh, their PMIs were very, very weak. They were released yesterday. That is the second largest economy in the world. When they're struggling, everybody else is also going to feel that. So that's what I've got for you today. Please leave your comments. Trade well. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.